Let us begin with the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 to 28. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay everyone according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste that until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. My friends, in the Gospel of Matthew, we learn about requirements to follow Jesus. Jesus let his disciples know that what they should be qualified for. The Gospel writes that there are three requirements, which are self-denial, carrying the cross, and follow Jesus. Self-denial means putting Jesus first. No way one can follow Jesus without looking at him, search him, try to find him, rather than other things. Carrying the cross perhaps is the clearest one because later after he told them, he died on the cross for their and our own sake. Jesus accepts and embraces the cross, not avoid it. Those are qualification of Jesus to follow him. Let me tell you this story. I was told few years back, and it went like this. A group tried to test their faith. They decided to climb a mountain. They were told before that that they had to cross a deep and dangerous cliff to get to the mountain top. They needed to take with them a cross that will be used to cross the cliff. The cross is to cross the cliff. They then started early in the morning under the smooth and fresh air, quiet journey and full of reflection, full of energy after the night's sleep. A few hours later, they had a break and had some fresh water from the yard and snack. They recharged. Then they continued. It was about half of the trip. They took a break again, thinking that they should have saved some energy before they got closer. While they were resting, some of them decided to cut off the top part of the cross they carried with. The cross became lighter. They reduced some weights from it, and by doing so, they could think of getting to the mountain top faster and easier. A few miles away from their destination, they prepared for arrival. When they arrived, they saw the deep cliff in front of them. They began crossing the cliff, started with those who decided not to cut off the top of the cross. They put the cross on the ground and walked on it to the other side. Surprisingly, the cross disappeared after the last step they took. Then came those who cut off the top of the cross. They could not cross the cliff. Some friends could not help them either because their cross disappeared. They stayed on the other side while those who carried the full cross with them were walking toward the top of the mountain when the light began to spark in their faces. They could not imagine they could see and enjoy the beauty that they could only see from the top, not from the bottom where they were at before. Without the cross, they could not rise to the top of the mountain. 
The lesson from this story is simple and clear. Do not cut off the cross. My friends, in the Gospel, we read Jesus put a three requirements. The three requirements interlink each other. One cannot take one requirement and despise the two or vice versa. For instance, if one only follows Jesus without carrying or taking his cross, he is not qualified. Or we can strictly say that the cross should not be absent from any Christian life because Jesus accepted and embraced it. Listen to the passage written by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 70. It is read, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. End quote. The cross is power. It is life driving force. It gives life and Jesus died on the cross and stamped his love to us from the beginning to the end. St. Paul does not only defend his mission. It is the Christ who gives him life through the cross that he might live. Without the cross, he might not live, minister, preach, and evangelize. In other words, by the cross of Jesus, we may have life abundantly, for Christ rose from the dead. The gospel was not born from human eloquence. It is God's word. The great saint, St. Paul, against human eloquence to prevent human from being distorted by lies. Not nice and fancy words safe. It is God who is the way, life, and truth. St. Paul takes us to the root and origin of our being, the cross. St. Paul preserved the truth brought to human by Jesus who died on the cross for our sake. The death of Jesus should not be undermined. By suffering and dying on the cross, He saved us. If the power of the cross is reduced, then we have no power and strength at all. We depend only on human strength that fades in the face of death. Consequently, if someone puts away or cut off his cross, he or she cannot cross the cliff of death. Christ died for us and gave us eternal life. In other words, Christ is with us in our suffering, or when we suffer, He is with us, and indeed, we may be with Him and in His protection. Thank you, and God bless you.